This is the World Championship of Ping Pong. Alexandra Palace in London, once again the venue. 64 players into the group stages, only half of them emerged. Those 32 are into the knockout phase of this competition. London is once again the host city, and in the opening session, our 64 players entered the group stages, hoping to make it to the next round. Beautiful oh, what a beautiful backhand. That's an absolutely game. fantastic Jan. backhand. Jan pulls that out at the very, very end of the match. Jan is guaranteed into the last 32. Uh, Janie, a very, very accomplished performance there. Going to be more consistency. 15 points. Costa Dinovic goes through into the last 32. What a fantastic performance. He's really pleased with that. 15 points. The winner is Matt Ware of England. With our confirmed lineup, the action has been divided up, and on the main table, an all Chinese match opens up the session. Ji Chen, the only female left in the competition, will play Li Zhong. Chris Doran also in action against Denmark Sorensen, followed by two time champion Andrew Bagley, who's up against Adam Bratt, and the very popular Gavin Runge takes on Russia's Dmitry Popov. On the second table, defending champion Yan Wei Hao faces compatriot Jin Li. Matt Ware's also in action when he plays Richard Gonzalez of the Philippines. Plenty of interest with a wide selection of players, but no escaping the strong presence of the Chinese as they attempt to win the World Championship of Ping Pong. The format for the knockout stage is based on each match being the best of three sets, each set the first to 15. We also have a double point ball, one per player per match. Only the final is extended to the best of five sets with two double point balls available. We start our coverage on the main table following the fortunes of the competition's only female survivor, Ji Chen, up against Li Zhong. Chen took the opening set before losing the second. This is now the third. Commentary from Colin Wilson and Tony West. So, Yan Wei Hao. One love. On his way on court two. So, there's eight matches going on in the show court tonight. Eight matches on court number two. We'll keep you up to date with what's going on on there. One all. So we've had a convincing win one way first game. It's completely the other way the second game. So, yeah, expect a 14-0 in this one. Yeah, to be honest, the 15-10 seemed an easy 15-10. Yeah, it was very comfortable, um, wasn't and it? And then it changed around. There. Bit happier with no, that sir. one. So, 2-1 to Chen. Certainly back in it. That's hit the net. I think it might have hit the edge. Zhang did one, very, three. very well to get the first one. Did really well to reach the second one. Just off balance, hard to control the ball when you're moving that fast in the wrong direction at the same time. So, can Chen regain Two, her three. authority? So, best of three, this is the final game. The uh, losing player will go out of the competition, but take home $1,500. The winner will be guaranteed a minimum of $2,000 tomorrow. <laughs> and that little Three, backhand four. side spin, just dropping into the net. Pendulum serve, forehand from the backhand corner, four and the all. forehand down the line. Nice control, both players, you can see them just Thinking, thinking, thinking. What they need to do next. What state they need to Five be in. Four. Surprisingly high amount of errors really in this game. I'll only put that down to, to nerves. I know what great players these, these are. Um, but the pressure just brings out these unforced errors sometimes. Yeah, four, Ken's not happy. 
Jong knows that he's turned this around and he's in with a chance of winning this whole match now. That was a good backspin chop. So was that. Chen disappointed. Well, I have to say Four, that Zhong has improved significantly. It's not just that Chen's lost her way a little bit, Up but that's been caused by uh, some great stuff from Zhong. Chen holding her finger a little bit. A little bit of discomfort there. They can't bring their own bats to this, to this tournament. They're given the bat on the day, and they have to uh, leave it on the end of the table and use, this, use the other person's bat for the second game to even it all up, make it fair. 7-5. But, um, yeah, Zhang's just got to found his range, found his consistency, hitting the ball a little bit harder, and just those small margins in three or four areas of his game uh, has managed to hold up uh, Chen's dominance four. from the first. 8-5. Yeah, absolutely, his confidence is up now, and so he's going for more, and more of them are going on, so it's uh, really tough for Chen. Five, he's got to find nine. a way back in this. He's already up to nine, four points gap, so she needs to find an answer fairly quickly. Yep, side spin on the serve, side spin on the backhand. Five, ten. Just missing that forehand, she's just missed timing. It's a horrible feeling, isn't it, when you... You know what you want to do, and the timing's 11, just not quite five. there. Sure, I'm surprised that uh, she hasn't used her two-point ball, um, and even Zhang here, I mean... Twelve, five. Oh, Double point ball from He's Mr. Zhang. He's going to use it now. Yeah. So the double point ball on Zhang's serve. He's entitled to take it any time up until he's got 12 points. You can't take it after that because it would mean that you would win the match with it, and that's not allowed. So at 12 points, if he wins this point, he gets two for it. So a bit of a killer ball, this one. Beautiful backhand. Just touched the top of the net. 14-5, second serve. So there, it touched the net and away. Nothing that Chen could do about that. And so it's match point to Zhang. 6-14. Oh, surely Chen's got to use a double point ball now. No reason not to. Well, it would be silly, silly not to, yeah. 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 Double well. point ball from Miss Chen. Yeah, I think um, at a stage like this, you've got to say <laughs> she should have used it earlier. So nine match points for Zhang. 8-14. Well, there you go. And I think earlier on we saw a player come back from 14 yeah, to seven. 8 or 9 down. Yep, it's happened. So it, it can happen. Yeah, and it does. It does in this game. Yeah, we had a 14-10, 15-14 earlier. So serving for the match. Again, another lucky 14, net court on the top, but well retrieved by Chen. And I don't quite think Chen knows what's gone wrong here. She's just lost the timing on her forehand. Backhand side spin. What a great hit to finish with. Forehand, a little bit shorter. Steps in beautifully. Didn't hit it off the end. Game and match to Zhong Li of China. We'll see him in the last 16. Welcome back to London for the World Ping Pong Championship. It's the knockout phase of the competition and plenty going on over the two tables in action. The defending champion Yan Wei Hao saw off the challenge of Jim Lee in two straight sets. Confirmation of that score and the remaining matches on table two. Next up will be the clash between Lubomir Piste and Stefan Kostadinovic. Scotland's Ian Johnston also in action and further down the card, Matt Ware takes on Richard Gonzalez from the Philippines. On the main table, we've already seen Li Zhong beat the only female player to make the last 32, Ji Chen. Next up, Irishman John Murphy against Liang Zhue. We join this match at the start. It's the best of three sets. Commentary from Colin Wilson and Tony West. So, let's see what the Irishman can do. He, uh, he wins serve. And they're away. Net serve. Well, they're nearly away because it was a let serve. Love one. Yeah. One on. Okay, one big backhand from Liang. 
the second one off the end of the table. Oh, that's a beautiful throwing across court. Tony, I told you he was good. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen him before, before, but just looking, we've seen a backhand and a forehand that's as good as anyone that I've, that I've seen already in this game. He's only four points old and yep. very impressive. But can, they, can he keep it up? Chen in the last game struggled to keep, keep it up. Four. And there, what you, see, what you saw there was Shui. He saw John just move across slightly to get his forehand in, so he played it wide off the forehand against John's yeah, so movement. Very smart. Five, John one. just tucked up there, and he knows that's not the start he wanted. Oh, Moving oh, around, you see, he didn't give John enough space. John's going to have to run around further Six, and faster one. to get his forehand in, or stick with the backhand and try and trade maybe backhand to backhand across the diagonal. Two, six. Just about got around that one. Get his forehand in from the backhand side. So he's off the mark, but he's dropped a few at the Two, start seven. of this first game. So John's got some Chinese writing down his arm. Oh, that's unlucky. Eight, two. Hit the net. When it goes, hits the net, often it goes very, very wide as a result. Nice serve down the line Eight, from Lee Andrew. Yeah, when John has got his forehand in, that's how he's won those three points. If he can put a bit of pressure on uh, Liang, just uh, get that forehand in with some pace at him, then he can get some errors. Yeah, three nine did the right thing. You've got to you've got to go close to the white line, but unfortunately, the wrong side of it doesn't do well. So three nine. Three ten. So what I was saying to Tony earlier, when you see this uh, this great Chinese player, you can see just before he hits the ball, he's got lots of options ten, about four. where he's going to play it. Like that forehand flick at miss, but he could have dropped it short, dropped it short to the diagonal, played it long to one That's side or the other. And he doesn't give many clues away, and he keeps his options open till the last minute. Oh. I'm so I'm impressed with his depth and angles. Everything is hitting hitting the lines. It's so difficult for John. What did I tell you? And that hit the net as well, well. makes it even more tricky. Yeah, but, uh, that's just plain the annoying. The quality of shot from uh, Liang is yeah. uh, fantastic. Well, you're having the same reaction that I had when I saw him the other day. Again, waited Four, for John to 13. move around. <laughs> A few there from John. It's difficult to know what to do to sort this out. 13-5. I think Shuei's lost, uh, missed three backhands. And five points in total. Yeah, it's horrible when you play someone like this because they can make you look silly because it's so hard to pick where it's going. And you commit one way, and the moment you do, it's gone the other. Yeah. 13, 13 6. six. Ireland and a lot of the crowd. A lot of the Brits as well. 13. Getting, really be, well getting behind John. He's, he's just pausing before he hits the ball now to. Do the same thing back. Make sure Shuei doesn't know which way the ball's going until the very, very last minute. Seven, that is quality, 14. isn't it? John played a terrific point there, um, but Shuei, well, it's, it's quality of stroke. It's just too much. Well, I love watching 14, John play, eight. and I love watching <laughs> Shuei play. It's a treat to see two players this good head to head. 14, and that's He'll be pleased he's pulled this back at least to 14-9. Oh, it's more than respectable against this guy. Nice flick. Oh, went for the 15, big forehand nine. hit for the crossover. Yeah, Didn't quite work. Two. Maybe now he's just found his feet a little bit. He's got an idea of what he might be able to do. At least you can go away and think, yeah, I've got a, I've got a bit of a plan for the second game. So I think a little bit startled at the first half of that game, but maybe he's just got himself into it. That's a beautiful stroke play from John. Got him away from the table. That's good enough. Is that coming back? It's not. Love one. And that's it. That's what he's got to do. He's got to get that forehand in with some power. Generally, most success to the backhand corner of uh, Shui. Although, of course, not many people would have had a hope of getting that last one back anyway. Well, at least he's moved him around. Managed to uh, force the error. 
there. It wasn't, it wasn't a great ball from John, but the fact that he had him wide of the forehand and then back in early on the backhand. Keep him guessing. Two, one. Yeah, great local hero. Certainly in global terms Nessa. here. John to actually hit his back down onto the ball to try and chop the ball down. I think that's absolutely right. You've got to mix it up. You mustn't allow him to get used to the pace. Make the ball drop quickly, bit of backspin. Hopefully he'll put it into the net. That's a bit weak, John. Yeah, the return of serve he popped it up. Needed more commitment on that return of serve. After that, he was struggling. See there, flick, not strong enough. Dre gets more length. Ball pops up. Goes for the winner. Classic um, tactics from Shrey. Four, two. Weak return of serve. Well, great start from John. Beginning of the second game. Certainly much, much better in the first. He was already under a lot of pressure by this stage. So this is really good news. Yeah. The crowd really enjoying this battle. There he goes Four, again. That's three. a fraction over the end. Yeah, big chance there, he knows it. Got a fairly weak return of serve, just over hit that forehand. Four all. Very smooth serve. Lovely, Five, lovely straight play. So fluid and relaxed when he plays the serve and the backhand topspin. Four, six. Yeah, John desperately trying to mix it up, throwing in some what we call chop blocks, but such a difficult skill to do when it's coming at you fast. Yeah, and also the ball can float yeah. off the end when you chop Five, block. Six. The backspin starts to take, and the ball will rise like an aeroplane going off the, the end of a runway, and it goes off the end of the table. Yo! Six so I'll take that. Short serve to the forehand. And Shuei overhitting. Because when you hit hard from when the ball's near the net, you've got to remember that the, the far end of the table is not very far away, so it's very easy to overhit, and that happened to Shrey there. Good serve down Seven, the line. Six. Made it look as though he was going across court, and fast down the line. Gets him back to 7-6 in the lead. 7-0. Yes. Shrey not happy there with that, regards that as an unforced error. You see his reaction. How did I miss that? So nice to see two point ball world from class Mr. table tennis Murphy. players play with the blue bat, the sandpaper bat. Can this be a return to the lead for John Murphy? 7-8. Make it 9-8 if he wins the double pointer. Here it comes. Oh, he can't do it. Got switched to the forehand. It's a bit slow onto that one, Tony. 9-7. It's a shame because it was a really good serve. Hit the back, back you know, close Change to the, the baseline. And uh, she... It's just softballed it back to the forehand and John didn't spot it early enough. Yep. Lang just checking the ball, hasn't got a crack in it. That's a big Dan forehand. Seven. To no avail. Could have been the one to pretty much get him back in the in the match. It's up. Right thing to do. Oh, it's a great return of Double serve again, wasn't it? The ball from popped up and he just missed the forehand. Okay, more pressure for John now as he uses the double point ball as well. Yeah. He knows he's got to survive this point. Oh, lucky. He'll take it. Eight, that ten. prevents two points against him. Gives him 1.4 for him. And it bounced twice. You can see that Jouet's played against Nets before. He was in position if the ball came off the end of the table to, uh, to return that one. But it bounced twice on the table, gave him no chance. Top edge from John. Eight, That's 11. why the ball skied. Short to the forehand again. That's a beautiful pick-up. The, well, the ball not quite bouncing twice on the table. You see just how it gets picked up, and then already he's under pressure. Disappointment. 13-8. Great shot. you play. Yeah. I, I honestly feel that we could be watching someone going into the very, very end of this tournament. Um, in this uh, Eight, Chinese badge way. It's very yeah. impressive. Yeah. Looks at the peak of physical athleticism as well. 
Welcome back to the knockout stage of the 2018 World Ping Pong Championship. On table two, we've seen Lubomir Piste book his place in the next round following a straight sets win over Stefan Kostadinovic. Confirmation of that result along with defending champion Yan Wei Hao. Still to play Thomas Sadlek against Ian Johnston and crowd favourite Matt Ware plays Richard Gonzalez. On the main table, we're two matches down with both Li Zhong and Liang Zhue through to the next round. Coming up now, the clash between former semi-finalist Mark Duran of Spain and China's Wang Xibo. Commentary from Colin Wilson and Tony West. Mark's a really good player. We saw him play last year, got to the semi-final, just lost out to the eventual winner, Yan, in a really close match. He's a good player. He's got a lovely backhand. So you'll see him take it take it early and we'll talk quite a lot about a backhand punch that he has. We'll probably see him do that, so you'll know what, you'll know what I mean. Really good player, um, but really interesting, as you say, against this Chinese player. Yep, Wang Shibo, 34 years of age, right-handed penhole player, uh, plays for Guanyin Shanshui in China. Uh, he won the Asian Open qualifier, so if you're impressed with some of the Chinese players so far, uh, when it came to the Chinese qualifier to make it through to here, this guy won it. So uh, the guy that you've just seen, Liang Shui, had to come across as, a, as not as a qualifier from China, but had to come across and uh, qualify in the last chance qualifier. This guy is a bona fide sandpaper bat player. And you can see there the stroke reduction of both players on the forehand. Beautiful. First game, Wong to serve level. Watch out for this beautiful backhand from Mark and a good forehand to follow it up. One love. Just warming it up, I hope. So Mark Duran in the green and the grey and yellow of Wang Shibo. Backhand to backhand. The punch there from Mark Duran. It actually worked. It went down the line, touched the edge of the table. And there, uh, switched it down the line. And again, down the line. Uh, Mark there deliberately playing a little bit slower One, on the two. forehand, choosing control over power and risk. Yeah, so I imagine Mark's plan is to uh, go backhand to backhand as much as he can with the pen holder Wang. Um, you would really expect him to win those Three, exchanges, exchanges, but Wang does look very consistent so far. Yeah, very solid player. Forehand serve from the backhand side. Durant, it's that pump action backhand more. Two, four. More of a punch. Waits for the ball to get right in towards his tummy. But the Chinese, very, very consistent. That's nice. Compact. Three, four. Yeah, now we see that backhand from Duran. It's amazing how quickly his arm goes through the stroke. It's not that much backswing. It just almost springs forward. Five, three. Yeah. And Mark did very well last year. Yeah, he did. Semi-finalist last year, so he's... Uh, Wang Shibo went down the line from the back end into the forehand, and Mark was across to it and hit it wide across court. You can see the bat wobbling, not sure if it's going to his back end or his forehand. And then there. Five all. Yeah, so number four seed this year as a result of his great performance last year, which uh, you know, is a real test for the Chinese player to see how he gets on against one of the higher ranked players in the world. Indeed. Is that a broken ball or a Replay double pointer? Point. I think it's a I think it's a broken ball. The ball actually broke during the rally, so 
They just stop. They'll have a little warm up with the new ball and then play the replay the point. Happy with the new ball. Five ball. So it's just to check that the new ball's okay, and it is. So again, backhand to backhand. Five Mark. six. Playing forehand from the crossover point, really. Wang Shibo playing in between Mark Duran's backhand and forehand. Nice backhand down the line from Mark Duran. That's a big forehand from Wang Shibo. Ball came up. Seven and five. Dispatched that one pretty efficiently. So Mark's a fast serve from the backhand side. Gets himself in trouble here and well dealt with there by Wang Shibo. There's the big backhand punches. Five, six. So those harder backhands were enabled because Wang Shibo just dropped it a little bit shorter. That enabled Mark to keep attacking hard on the backhand corner. Seven all. And that's the shot I remember from last year, that fast backhand punch down the line, which uh, Wang was unable to respond to that time. So Mark just looking a little bit more confident now. Forehand from the middle, backhand down the line, the famous one, and then into the backhand. Seven, Once nine. you've opened up the gap and created a space. It'll be interesting if Wang starts to realise that uh, he wants to stay away from those backhand to backhand exchanges and try and get more forehand to forehand stuff going on. Yeah, possibly. Eight, nine. And then we'll see how it evolves if that starts to happen, what Mark does with it. Whether indeed it becomes an advantage to Wang if he plays backhand down the line to Mark Duran's forehand. But players will always change nine something all. if they're not winning. Two fantastic shots to finish that rally. One corner, then the other. Both right on the join of the white lines across the baseline and the sideline. Fantastic play. Wang Chibo being, being very, very clever about exactly where he's putting it. He's keeping Mark Duran off balance on the backhand, putting it a little bit wider to the backhand, a little bit more to the crossover. 11-9. Just making Mark Duran move side to side so he can't settle and play his strong counter drive just from one position. Two smashes from Wang Chibo, recovered very well from the first one. Of course, it's a very long follow-through, and he has to recover and get back for the next one. It's a bit like throwing two javelins in half a second. Yeah, I hate saying you're right, Colin, but um, you are right. Wang is really cleverly playing to the right hip quite often of Duran, and he's never playing forehands there. He's trying to play the backhand slightly off balance, and it's making him miss. Well, thanks, Tony into the backhand, into the crossover. It's a classic example there. Back into the backhand and then to crossover. Weak forehand from Mark Duran. Very, very clever and play 13. there from Wang. But subtle movements. He knows exactly what he's trying to do. Executing it very, very well. So three-point lead for Wang. Two points away from the first game. 15 points to, Net serve. to bag the game. Mark just... Unable to dominate now. 14 10. Five game points to Wang. And there it is. First game 15, 15 10. 10. Game one. Well, that was a very, very good recovery from Wang. Mark Durang got back into it into towards the middle of the game for a, and uh, Wang really pulling it out at the end. Second game, Mr. Durant to serve level. Second game, love all Duran serving. Backhand down the line, love Duran. And again into the crossover. Duran having Too to long. move and play a forehand. And he's not as quick, Mark Duran, to play in a, a good forehand when the ball's placed into his crossover. Again, Wang Chifo pummels the crossover. That time, Mark Duran goes across 
to play a backhand. But beautiful service stroke production. And then lovely backhand. So not so oh. powerful a backhand from Wang Shibo. Sometimes pen holders have very powerful backhands. Not always. Wang's isn't that great, but good enough to beat a great player like around 15-10 as part of his overall game. Two, three. play from Wang and both times Duran played a forehand he just lifted it with no real power and that enabled Wang then to take the initiative and pummel the ball quite hard at Duran afterwards fast surf to the crossover Five, two. got the ball up bashed it hard with the forehand again into the crossover well it's pretty clear where Wang thinks he can get underneath Mark's skin Three five. You see Mark changed the way he was holding the bat there, Tony, in the serve. Three six. So not holding it in the traditional way, moving the, the bat around in his hand in order to create the serve. Yes, yeah, to allow his um, wrist to be a bit more flexible. Seven three. Mark looking just a tiny bit disconsolate there. I think uh, we need to find a, a new kind of energy from somewhere to take Eight, this. Three. This is not going to win in the match. So we have to rack your brains and find a way out. Net serve. That's a beautiful serve. A little bit of side spin into the crossover. Mark talking to himself into the crossover. Mark went round, saw it coming. Nine. Didn't make the forehand. The forehand from the crossover has been a weakness of Mark today. Yeah, and this is really impressive from Wang. I mean, Duran played the world champion Yan last year and gave him a real scare. Um, Wang's not having the same sort of problems. So we could see another real top class yeah, Chinese player here. Three, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I said this could be a great mash and explosive. I think it has been. Look at that power. And four. I would have liked it to have been closer. But such is the quality. Look at that. Quality serve. The hit really strong. And that's going to go past him. 11 4. Yeah, great fast serve into the crossover there to that right hip. Drop um, shot's lucky. Yeah. Well put away. It's always, it's always hard to keep your focus when something like that happens. But no error. Oh, that's a beauty. Now, he did get his forehand into the crossover there. Yeah, double time for the double point ball. ball. Last-ditch defence here from Duran. Double point ball now. Two points, on, two points if he uh, can convert this point on his serve. That's a great forehand from Mark Duran. Wang's footwork, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, terrific Five play from one. Wang. I thought Durant played that really well. He even mixed it up and threw in a chop in the middle of the rally. Yeah, so you watch Wang's feet here. Goes wide of the forehand there. Comes in around. Beautiful footwork. Great control from the crossover. Well, wonderful six. play. Really wonderful play. So double Durant played his double point Mr. ball, Wong. but the red line across means that he didn't convert it. Wang's taking his opportunity. And this is the latest chance that he might have to play it because it's uh, a game and 12-6 up. You can't take the double point ball on 13 to give you a direct victory. And he takes it, 6-14. Six. Nine match points to Wang Shibo, the very impressive 34-year-old from Zhuzhou. That's a beautiful stroke. 15, well, six, stroke production, absolutely four. wonderful. You see the, just the technical display four, of Liang Zhuo and of Wang Shibo in the last two games. Beautiful to watch. That's great stuff. Welcome back to Alexandra Palace in North London and the knockout stage of the World Ping Pong Championship. 
32 players are gradually being whittled down to 16. Thomas Sadelek is one of those 16, having just beaten Scotland's Ian Johnston. Confirmation of that result and the fact that Jan Wei Howell, a defending champion, is through, along with Lubomir Piste. Still to play, Hu Jun Chow of China and Hong Kong's Lin Jing Ji. On the main table, we've already seen Li Zhong make it through, along with Liang Zhue and Wang Shibo. Next up, the ever popular Christopher Doran against Denmark's Benjamin Sorensen. Commentary for this match comes from Colin Wilson and Tony West. So, the Danish champion plays the One serial quarter-finalist, Chris Durham. Oh, and you see the angle that Chris got there. He didn't, he didn't want to play it too hard because it would go long. He played it off to the side. So, very, very good ping-pong brain. One, Dennis catches two. the ball, no problem. Gives it back to Benjamin Sorensen. So serve there. Similar serve again from Chris. Went for the big backhand Green down the one. line. You can see a kind of a throbbing at the end of the stroke as he lets the, the wrist go there, but just off the end. So he's just trying to find his range. Definitely, and you can see that he's Green feeling quite two. confident because he's going for these shots. I think he's trying out now. So when he gets close, so if it does get close, he knows he, he's got this kind of arsenal there and ready. Yeah, so. They say about Chris, he can do just about anything to any ball. Two, four. Um, and that's very, very disconcerting for the opponent. Because yeah, you never know what's coming until the very, very last minute or until he actually hits the ball. And someone with Chris as well, you will not be putting many balls past him. And on the tapers table, you, it's difficult. And uh, in the ping pong, it's even more difficult. Even more difficult. Three, yeah. four. Again, for Chris, the important thing is concentration here. Making a lot of unforced errors. Yep. 4 6 down. Yeah. So, Sorensen will be happy. Good start. Mm. Five, Just to take the pace off that backhand, Sorensen, but popped up off his bat, carried too long. I think this is the time for Chris to play a little bit safer because he's hitting a lot of balls out. Changing the position and not always playing to his backhand. Yeah, so Soren's done, Soren's done well to get this far and to hold up so well against Chris at the start of this game. Six, seven. But uh, it's Lubomir Pishte's group that he came out of. That has some great players in it. Leanne Schwert also came out of it. Koshenko also came out of that group. Which means that uh, he got ahead. Wow, of, what a beautiful backhand. Yeah, that's class. Beautiful. So he managed to get out of a group with uh, Vilena from the Philippines, uh, Erfi, Gerge Urban from, Hung from Hungary, Filip Milanowski from Poland, and Gilles Ebert from Belgium. So Sorensen's having a good time. But Chris is a class act. Nine, six. Little choke or yo from, yeah. from Chris. And then you can see now he's found his run from that big back end. He's now nine, six up, and he looks totally in control. He was six, four down. Now he's nine, six up. Nice control backhand from Chris. Chris playing shots oh. down the line nicely Seven, and then nine. trying to kind of send the body one way and then with the wrist the other way. So that's 7-9, Sorensen serving. Chris not quite getting that one. Can't believe he missed that one, can he? Oh, now a little bit edge and that's what happens Eight, when you kind of like nine. get a little bit complacent in this, you know, something could always easily go against so you. That, and now it's so that close. one went on, making it 8-9. Now, Chris could have gone for a big shot there, played a slower ball, and but it worked. Took, the, took Sorensen off his rhythm. Absolutely. I mean, if he'd have lost that point, again, it's back to, you know, it, it being tied. So I think it's quite important for him to play safe and keep it simple. Beautiful well shot there. What well a great done, recovery. Chris. Great stuff. 11-8. Yeah. 
So the last point and this one pushes him up to 11-8 ahead. Double point ball from Mr. Doran. Chris going in for the kill. First game, 11-8 up already. He's willing to take his double point ball to uh, sacrifice any future double point ball in favour of just trying to secure this first end. That's a beautiful yeah, sure. hand down the line. Yeah, Not yeah. many people can do that with such ease. Well, and great thing because he's, 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 his arms are so long, so he can, he's got those opportunities to just play those aw awkward angles. Um, and definitely for him is that, you know, it's the last 16, or last 32, sorry, and um, he doesn't want to be one nil down because it's best of three. 9-13. So that's, that was good stuff. 9-8, 11-8, double point ball, 13-8. Classic ping pong. Taking it from pretty much square to a decent lead. So, so oh, 14 so 9. Now, it's easy to do because if you don't do it long enough, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's small margins. If you don't do it long enough, they'll, they'll crack it. If you go longer, they might miss it altogether. And so, Chris Doran takes the first game. Um, And you can see that Chris is quite a bit better than the player, but I think uh, the other guy has to come up, going for a bit more shots, now, a bit more risk, you know, and then um, Chris is, has just got to stay focused. I don't think he needs to go for too much big shots. Keep it on the table, he knows that he's better forward to forward and probably back into back in as well. Yeah, so it was about six all, I think, in the, in the start of the first game, so it's a good opener. Yeah, I think From it was 8-6 eight, 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 down. Chris was, no, 6-4 six, 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 down, sorry. 6-4 okay. down, and Chris went 9-6 yeah. up. Yeah. So, English support, they're happy. Great night out for the lads. Dennis is laughing as well, Chris's coach. Uh, they, they, Chris and uh, Dennis coach together in Peterborough. Uh, the famous club there, Julian T's club, Dick and Gray and Gareth Herbert, fantastic club over there in Peterborough, bringing on lots of young players. They've got a new premises. And um, of course, Dennis knows that he's a Harvard uh, expert, isn't he? Level. Yeah, well, Dennis played with pimples out, so that's rubber, but with pimples out and therefore less grip, uh, all of his career, didn't he? On both sides, backhand and forehand. Uh, even when the more spinny rubbers were available. Now that is the best drop shot I've seen. Wow, wow. And again, look at that class. Look at, look, that class. At the, look at that first drop shot and the second drop shot. Unbelievable. The, the, the difficult thing about it is it's only one point as well. I mean, it yeah. should be five. So you see there, plays that long one, makes it look like he's going to hit it, bounces it so it's going to bounce twice. Sorensen does so well to get the first one back, but the second drop shot killed him. Bounced on the table, it's never going off the end of the table after 10 bounces. If I was doing that, I may have hit the barrier. <laughs> Backhand down the line, one, forehand across two. from Chris, attempted, missed. Sorensen hanging on. That's a beautiful return of serve from Chris. Just got Sorensen off two balance, all. but at two all. A couple of little unforced errors from Chris. You will get those from time to time because he's being so creative about what he does. It won't all go on. Of course, of course. And, and the trick for him is, 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 again, as I keep saying, is the focus because he can do anything. He Three, can, two. he really can. He, for a tall guy, he can turn around the corner. He can play a backhand cross. He can play it straight. You get him wide. He can play. He, he really has so much options. Just for him, it's just challenge and everything. Yeah. So that means for Chris. Oh, look at that shot. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, his perception is so good, his touch and feel is so good. What it means for Chris is that he's got to get his decision-making right consistently about what creativity to use and what to leave out in different shots and different rallies. And also, the execution of his shots has to be solid, given that a lot of his shots are very different during a rally. No, of course. And I think a lot of the big guys will be worrying about Chris. It's just what Chris do you get on the day? Well, he's one of the biggest of the big guys already. And I don't mean physically, I mean on the table. He's always there or thereabouts. 
had to qualify this year, qualified in second place in the English close, beaten by Matt Ware. By what, four. What, what a touch. I mean. Again, he got it to bounce twice before Sorensen even got to the ball. And if you notice as well, Sorensen's opposite hand touched the table, and that's not allowed, so even if he did get it back, this is Chris's point. Yeah. You see Sorensen's... Wow. Look at that, look and at that back and straight, six. power straight. And I mean, then the, and then the power. That. You think he's a good touch player, and then look at the power that he puts into this. One there, and then goodbye. Sorensen, a great athlete, but he's just not able to keep up with all the different angles and different paces that Chris ball is giving seven. him. It's a, real, it's a real mental puzzle, isn't it, when you play Chris Doran? Double point De ball definitely. from Mr. Sorensen. So, Sorensen, rear guard action to keep himself in this one. A game and 4-7 down. I wouldn't have left it this long, personally. But he's got Seven, the two points. Six. Yeah, again, but Chris didn't need to, at that point, turn around and use his fine. He could have just kept it with his back on the table because Sorensen has to go for it. Sorensen has to force it to play. But, you know, Durant is full of confidence, and that's why he's so good as well. But sometimes it's good to just keep it real simple. Yeah. And a quick shout-out for Chris as well. He's been coaching at uh, our club, Corby Smash in Corby in Northamptonshire. And uh, my lads have been, been doing very well out of uh, playing with him. Great one-to-one -one coach. Home. So insightful. Yeah, with Chris, is what you get is that he loves tables. He's obsessed with it, and ping-pong as well. So, I mean, um, I think with him is that yeah, his anticipation is just fantastic of, 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 of the game. So, hence Seven, why he's able eight. to do what he wants to do, yeah. because he just reads it really well. Yeah. When did we see Chris lunging, out of position, reaching, stretching? For a big guy, gets out of his own way very, very well. And like you say, it's his anticipation. He sees what's coming Eight even all. before the other person's hit the ball, doesn't he? Of course. But again, you know, look at this. He's played four super points, and, and unfortunately, he's lacked a bit of concentration, but now it's eight all. Oops, serve off. Chris will definitely be feeling a bit Nine confident eight. about that, that, you know, knowing that this game is still mine to take. Yeah. So raise of the eyebrows. I think he's, uh, he feels like lucky to get let off the hook with that one after being caught. So he's ahead again, but now nine all. back at level nine all. So, Darius, do you keep playing the same at game up and nine all, or is there something else that you try and pull out to, uh, to pull a lead? In this situation, Chris has to just keep the ball on the table and because, um, you know, he's, he's safer. He's, he's, he is faster and stronger, uh, uh, if you look at it. So um, I think for him it's just the, the concentration. Yeah, avoid, you know? avoid the errors at this stage. Yeah, and just think that he's one on down. You know, if he's one on down, he'll be playing with his life. Yeah, because the danger is to try and do something special and, and miss a couple. Exactly and that. all. Good little break over time there. Although he's saying something's there, you know, he's just trying to get refocused as well at the same he time. Is. This is a big point. Good shot. Good Eleven, shot there, Chris. Ten. I mean, yeah. that's, that's what they need to do when, when uh, Sorensen had a double point, is just get it on the table. I mean, it's easier said than done. No, true. But he kept the return serve very low, didn't he? Happy with that. So, 12-10. 12 10. 12 and now he's playing that's correct. That's it. It feels like a little break of serve there. Mini, mini break of serve. 12-10, two serves to come. Chris can decide how to start the rally. You can see him blinking as he's thinking what to do. Nice backhand defense. Great shot there, good. Forehand attack, backhand attack. Beautiful combination of different strokes. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, when it came close again, he's just kind of refocused and, and, and just got similar. And he could do this all day long. They play rallies like this, he'll win five, five out of five. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating if Chris wins this and then gets to play one of the other players that have impressed us so much, some of the some of the senior Chinese players, for instance. Uh, Chris is going to be a, a different kettle of fish to uh, to contend with for some of those players. It'll be fascinating to watch. Fifteen ten game edge Doran. Christopher Donner. And that's enough for Chris Doran. He's done his day's work. He's out of the groups. He's through the first round, the last 32, into the last 16. Four matches down on the main table, five still to go, and plenty to look forward to, including two-time champion Andrew Bagley, last year's finalist Alexander Fleming, and the very popular Gavin Rumgay. On table two, we've seen Yan Wei Hao, Lubomir Piste, Thomas Sadelek, Hu Jun Chao, and Christoph Zakhar all progress through to the last 16. Two outstanding issues here. 
Zhu and Chen to clash along with Richard Gonzalez and Matt Ware. All four men chasing a place in the last 16 of the World Championship of Ping Pong.